Amber fossils suggest male mosquitoes were once bloodsuckers. The preserved insects, from a cache of Lebanese resin, appear to be male but have mouth parts that are found only on modern female mosquitoes. Every single mosquito that's ever bitten you has been female. For them, a meal of blood is the ultimate girl dinner. Only females have mouth parts capable of piercing skin. But insects found trapped in amber, described in a study published Monday in the journal Current Biology, suggest that male mosquitoes may have once drunk blood, too. When small animals or plants get stuck in gooey tree resin, they can be preserved if the resin hardens into amber. In Lebanon, I have found some 450 different outcrops of amber, which is a lot for a small country said Donny Azar, a paleontologist at the Nanjing Institute of Geology and Paleontology and Lebanese University, and an author of the paper. Lebanese amber is rich in preserved fossils, called inclusions, and dates to around 125 million years in the early Cretaceous period. In addition to being the age of the dinosaurs, it was also a time when flowering plants were becoming more widespread. Dr. Azar says he studies inclusions with the aim of understanding how flowering plants and pollinator insects have evolved together. He collected the amber specimens in this study about 15 years ago in central Lebanon, but he thought they belonged to a group of insects that he didn't focus on, so Dr. Azar didn't prioritize them for study. But while polishing one of the specimens to a thin slice that could be examined under a microscope, he was taken aback. To my big surprise, I said, oh, gosh, this is a mosquito, Dr. Azar said. His co-author and former doctoral advisor, Andernell, of the National Museum of Natural History in Paris, confirmed that two of Dr. Azar's amber specimens appeared to be the oldest known fossils from the mosquito family, with sharp, elongated mouth parts covered in tiny tooth-like bristles. Further examination of the insects yielded another surprise. I said, Ander, I didn't drink anything, but I'm seeing something bizarre here. These are males, Dr. Azar said. The insects had pincer-like organs called claspers on their abdomens, which are used to hold onto females during mating. The presence of these claspers meant that Dr. Azar and Dr. Nell had stumbled upon a seeming impossibility. Male mosquitoes with mouth parts made for blood sucking. Modern male mosquitoes live off nectar and plant juices. Most of the time, so do females. They only drink blood when they need extra protein to produce their eggs. It's long been thought by scientists that mosquitoes and their biting fly cousins evolved from plant-eating ancestors and that females later evolved to have the ability to drink blood. We think now that originally, the mosquito could be blood-sucking DR. Azar said. With the appearance of the flowering plant, this function could be just forgotten later on during the evolution of these insects. The idea that these ancient male mosquitoes fed on blood was interesting and fascinating and controversial, said Dale Greenwald, a paleobiologist at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. After all, feeding on blood is a riskier strategy than sipping nectar because it comes with the threat of being swatted. One reason modern female mosquitoes only feed on blood when they need it for reproduction. It's also possible that the insects in this study will turn out to be something other than mosquitoes, or that perhaps their bristly mouth parts, while different from those of modern males, were not used for drinking blood. Dr. Greenwald said that with their hypothesis, Dr. Azar and Dr. Nell have stepped out on some very thin ice but that their bold claim could wind up pushing scientific research forward. Some scientists are very conservative, some scientists are not Dr. Greenwald said. The good thing about that is that if those who are not turn out to be wrong, those who are will eventually correct the error. And we'll just have to wait and see. Female mosquitoes are among the most notorious blood-feeding insects, sometimes causing severe allergic responses or vectoring a variety of microbial pathogens. 1-2 hematophagy in insects is likely a feeding shift from plant fluids, with the piercing sucking mouth parts serving as suitable exoptation for piercing vertebrates' skin.
The origins of these habits are mired in an often poor fossil record for many hematophagous lineages 3-4 particularly those of sufficient age, as to give insights into the paleocological context in which blood feeding first appeared or even to arrive at gross estimates as to when such shifts have occurred. This is certainly the case for mosquitoes, a clade estimated molecularly to date back to the Jurassic. 5. The known Mesozoic Culicid are late Cretaceous, assigned to the modern Anophelin or to the extinct Bermaculicin, sister to other Culicid, all with mouth parts of a modern type. Here, we report the discovery, in Lower Cretaceous Amber from Lebanon, of two conspecific male mosquitoes unexpectedly with piercing mouth parts armed with denticulate sharp mandibles and lacini. These male fossils were likely hematophagous. They represent a lineage that diverged earlier than Bermaculison, extending the definitive occurrence of the family into the early Cretaceous and serving to narrow the ghost lineage gap for mosquitoes. Insect hematophagy on vertebrates, including humans, is an important problem in public health. This type of micropredation can cause serious illness. 1-2 Hematophagy in many insects is likely the result of shifts in feeding from plant fluids such as nectar, with the piercing sucking mouth parts of many fluid feeding groups serving as a suitable exoptation for the piercing of vertebrate skin and vice versa. For instance, the exclusively hematophagous fleas seem to have diverged from nectar feeding Mechoptrida. 6. The situation is rather particular among the Culicomorphan flies that are nectar feeding, but some groups have developed blood feeding in relation to increased egg production by females, and they seem to form a complex mosaic of changes among Culicomorphan flies. For example, it seems that the oldest representatives of the nectar feeding Chironomid were once hematophagous. 7. The fossil record reflecting these changes is often poor for many hematophagous insect lineages. 3 4 particularly those of sufficient age, as to give insights into the paleocological context in which blood feeding first appeared or even to arrive at gross estimates as to when such a shift may have occurred. All extant and likely fossil female mosquitoes, culicid, are hematophagous and nectarivorous, whereas extant species of their sister group, caoboreid, are nectar feeding. Thus, a shift from strict nectarivory to partial hematophagy has occurred, but it is currently not possible to determine whether the earliest of stem group culicid were hematophagous or not. Fossil mosquitoes are largely confined to Cenozoic deposits and comparatively modern toxa. Occurrences for Mesozoic culicid are rare, with only three definitive records, two from Upper Cretaceous Amber deposits, Canada, Myanmar, along with an indeterminate putative culicid from the Upper Campanian of Arizona. These fossils have been assigned to either the modern subfamily Anophelin or to the extinct subfamily Bermaculicin, sister to all other culicid. Molecular estimates for the initial split and divergence of the crown group mosquitoes have recovered an early Jurassic age, ca. 197.5 million years ma. 5 Accordingly, these estimates imply mosquitoes' ghost lineage spanning nearly 97 ma. 5 The related family Caoboreid has fossil occurrences dating from the middle to the late Triassic. 8 Nonetheless, if there existed an extensive stem lineage before the appearance of crown group Culicid, the Culicin and Opheline divergence could have taken place much later in the Jurassic or even in the early Cretaceous, particularly if the phylogenetic placement of the extinct Bermaculicin as sister to the crown group, Culicin and Opheline, is accurate. Critical to the ongoing debate is the discovery of new fossil material predating the mid-Cretaceous. Here, we report the discovery of two conspecific male mosquitoes with piercing mouth parts armed with denticulate sharp mandibles and lacini, preserved in lower Cretaceous amber from Lebanon, extending the definitive occurrence of the family into the early Cretaceous. Phylogenetic analysis indicates that the new fossil represents a lineage of mosquitoes that diverged earlier than Bermaculicin, narrowing the ghost lineage gap for mosquitoes and providing glimpses into Mesozoic culicid paleodiversity. This discovery also suggests that not only were the earliest female mosquitoes hematophagous but males were also in some cases. Culicomorpha male, female unknown, figures 1 and 1b. 
head with developed proboscis, figure 1c, slightly longer than 1 3 length of antenna. Mandibles exceptionally sharp, denticulate and elongate, extending to apex of hypopharynx. Lacinia denticulate, figures 1d1f. Maxillary palpus without scales, maxillary palpamir i.e. longest, slightly longer than palpamir v. Set on length of flagella mirrors 0.25 length of those of basal ring. Clypeus with sparse set. Scales present along apical and posterior margins of fruing, figures 1G and 1H, wing veins lacking scales. Meron continuously sclerotized with dorsal margin abutting catapimeron. The new fossil has the adult synopomorphy for culicoidea, i.e. adult male with anterior claw of each leg with a basal prong 11, figure 1I. Within the superfamily, it lacks the two synopomorphies proposed for dixid, i. R1 extending very near or to wing apex and curved apically and R23 strongly arched, excluding affinities with this family. A.